I'm Corvette Wall with DB Auction. Here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, August the 8th, brought to you in part by Legacy Beef Cooperative, guys. Right now we're on the third round for $175 a share. You can lock in your right uh, to slaughter one steer, but you're also a member of the cooperative, which is going to own a 20% share of the Cattlemen's Heritage Beef Plant uh, being constructed near Council Bluffs, Iowa. It's a good investment. Uh, you'll be able to, to trade the shares uh, back and forth, uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be something of value, guys. Check them out. Check out this video. It's that same interview that I, I did with Chad Tenniger there, uh, but it's, uh, you, mean, you need to hear it again and check it out. Check, uh, go to the website at LegacyBeefCoop.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards in Beaver, Oklahoma. Another big sale for them, about 4,200 head for their Tuesday and Wednesday cattle auctions. Be all feeder cattle and calves on Tuesday. They're going to have uh, 25 to 2,800 calves. Uh, most of them be weighing four to 600 pounds. Uh, only 15% or so will be weaned, but uh, more than three-fourths of them will have had at least one round of shots. So. Uh, and, and the quality will be outstanding and they're going to have a lot of big strings a lot of the calves are coming in the ring will be 60 to 100 head strings of calves so really nice quality there have about a thousand yearlings on hand uh, probably 300 heifers most of them weighing in the six and sevens and don't believe they got any square loads of heifers but to have to put packages together on the steers uh, about 700 steers they'll be weighing from 700 to 1,000 pounds and there'll be at least 8 loads to 9 and light 10 weight steers, yearling steers there uh, all black and good enough to go anywhere guys uh, probably 500 cows for the Wednesday cow sale uh, Lane told me they're gonna have a lot of uh, second stage bred cows there if you want to put some of those together but uh, it'd be an impressive offering there and uh, also on Tuesday there'll be a lot of packages of grazing yearlings like long time weaned uh, calf weight yearling grazing yearlings if you want to check those out uh, go to dvauction.com gotta call Jerry and talk to her in the office if you want to get approved but uh, check them out get on there view that sale and bid if you want to Harriet uh, gives hope and I tell you what Harriet Hageman uh, she's the lone U.S. representative from Wyoming because they have such a, a small number of people in that state. But she is doing some good. She is the one that has the resolution against the mandate on, uh, on um, EID tax. So uh, you know that we came to this rally. I called it the Freedom Rally for Livestock Producers in Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, Harriet was there. She sp uh, spoke for a long time, you know, close to an hour, and boy, does she know what she's talking about. She is on top of that. She was an attorney uh, that sued the government uh, for, for over 30 years there before she went into the politics, and she is impressive, impressive. She knows the ramifications of all of it. She knows reasons that we don't need this mandatory EID that I hadn't even thought about and hadn't even talked about with people. She knows all the ones that will uh, it hurt, hurt the industry. Uh, it's, it's basically for complete uh, vertical integration uh, and government takeover. It's, it's, it's government overreach. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, they, they want to align themselves with the big corporates there. It'll be just like the hog industry, guys, if we let them do this. Uh, sure, that, you know, EID tags are a good way uh, to keep records. If it's working for you, keep doing it, and you'll get a premium. Uh, if we make everybody do it, it's no premium. Not everybody will get to do it. She talked about how it's only really going to help about 11% of the cattle in the industry. Uh, it'll be cattle like right up here uh, in uh, in western South Dakota and in eastern Wyoming and southeastern Montana places where cattle change uh, change their their state because it's for interstate. You know, you get cattle in uh, say the state of Nebraska, and uh, a lot of those cattle start out there. They're sold to to backgrounders there. They stay there, and then they're slaughtered there. Same with Kansas and Texas and places, but it's only really going to affect, and they're going to spend like $26 million doing it, and nobody wants to do it. And then make the sale barns 
uh, have to enforce it, and they don't want to enforce it. it it's just a, it, it's a really a, a, a mess. And uh, but she's got several ways she's going to fight it. We've got to support her. You've got to tell your lawmakers to get behind Harriet Hageman, uh, representative of Wyoming, the, uh, her uh, resolution to stop this mandatory EID. It is an absolute wreck, guys. And all of your uh, establishment cattle and beef are all for it, which makes you know uh, that, it, that it's, it's no good and it stinks to high heaven, guys. But uh, we had a good day. And your uh, and your feeder cattle and calf, especially calf sales. Uh, everybody in this part of the country was talking about the big uh, sale that they had in Faith, South Dakota. I'm going to give you some quotes out of there. Uh, very impressive. Uh, and they were going to have some of the best calves that they have all year, and they sure brought the prices there. Uh, we had kind of an up and down day on your board. Uh, so uh, you know, it really, really nothing to change anything, but. Uh, I'll give you the results of last week's fat cattle market. Uh, uh, the uh, boys I work with, they were setting up uh, Gordon Livestock in Gordon, Nebraska uh, on DV Auction. They're going to be broadcasting their sales on DV Auction now. And I uh, wanted me to give a shout out to Patsy. I've talked to Patsy on the phone. She's a big Feeder Flash gang member. Uh, and uh, we're excited to have her on. She's excited to have us. It's going to be great. They have got some of the fanciest cattle there that come to that sale in Gordon, Nebraska, and you guys will be able to bid on them online, DV auction, once you get approved. Now, uh, the sale that they are having here today on Tuesday is just a way up sale, but they're having a big, uh, one of their biggest specials that they have all year coming up this Saturday, October the 12th, and they will be broadcasting that on DV auction, so I'm looking forward to that. Talk about your board on Monday to open the week, October live cattle futures were up 47 cents at 187.47. December was up two cents at 187.02, and your back months were all up uh, 35 cents to 147 higher. So take a look at those out fronts there on uh, on your live cattle futures. On feeder cattle futures for October, they were down 77 cents uh, at 248.85. November down just 12 of 249.15, but then all of your back months on feeder cattle were higher, from 20 cents to 255 higher. So mostly positive uh, on your cattle futures, and they've been uh, being pretty good to us, better than uh, probably we we expect. December corn was up one and a quarter cent at 426 a bushel. Uh, beans down three and three quarter cent a bushel at 1034. Uh, hard red winter wheat for December up five and a quarter cent at 603 and a quarter. Your weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle trade out of your five area feeding region uh, had a small total but bigger than what we thought. They, 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 uh, the Packers bought more cattle after two o'clock or when they decided to report them. They were supposed to report everything they bought up to two o'clock at two o'clock, but uh, likely some of those didn't get put in. But uh, about about twice what we thought. We hadn't sold 20,000 head uh, the last we knew of. They bought uh, a little over 20,000 uh, late on Friday. So we totaled up with 47,000 negotiated sales uh, last week uh, out of the five area, which is still nothing compared to 63,200 the previous week and 79,900 the same week a year ago. Live uh, prices of fat steers and heifers negotiated in your five area feeding region range from 185 to 188 and a half. That was 50 cents to a dollar higher. Weighted average on live steers last week negotiated was 186.89 up 74 cents. So uh, still gaining ground there. Uh, your dressed uh, price range was from 294 to 300 dollars. That was four to five bucks higher. Uh, big time gains on the dress market. Uh, dress steer weighted average in the five area was 296 smooth there and that was up uh, two dollars and forty seven cents almost all your dress trade was uh, at uh, 296 there and that was two to four bucks higher uh, northern plains steady to two higher for the most part most sales from 187 to 188 southern plains sold all their cattle at 186 which was a buck higher now nationwide negotiated we had 59,400 compared to 81,200 the previous week and 94,500 same week a year ago. 
uh, of that 59,400 negotiated we had last week nationwide, 18% of them, about 10,600, were for the two to four week delivery, which they buy out front to try to set the market up for a fall. Negotiated grid sales last week totaled 43,600, almost as big as negotiated cash. Uh, and your forward contracts were uh, 4,160 head and uh, your formulated sales, which make up the bulk of it, 264,100. Of the four out of five areas uh, in the five area that we get information from, Iowa sold 18,400 negotiated, Nebraska sold 18,500, just about the same. Kansas sold 5,400 and Texas 4,600. They did see uh, a couple loads in Iowa sell on Monday at 187, so uh, it's about steady with what they were doing last week. Box beef cutout values gained big ground on Monday. So, you know, we ought to get the benefit from that. Choice cuts up 335 at 305.93. Selects were up $1.72 at 289.33. And your slaughter extremely lacked. So your, your uh, packers are getting a lot more for the wholesale beef and they, they turned the, the slaughter down. I mean, the lightest Monday, I remember that wasn't a holiday. 110,000 is all. It's usually 130 something. Uh, that was uh, that 110,000 was 9,000 less than the uh, previous week and 13,000 less than the same week a year ago. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real time index on DV auction based on an 800 pound cash auction steer up through your middle 12 states. Uh, it ended the day or late in the day on Monday at 248.83. That was up 54 cents and had some impressive markets on Monday. Uh, that are heavily influenced with commodity cattle guys. Uh, your latest CME cash feeder cattle index 247.48. Let's talk about your big sales and how they trended. Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City had 4,700 uh, and, and I mean a lot higher prices. Feeder steers weighing over seven were steady to two bucks higher. Uh, steers weighing under seven were seven to eleven dollars higher with spots as much as 20 bucks higher on peewee steer calves. That's what everybody wants, guys. Feeder heifers went over six and a half or five to eight dollars higher. Then your lighter heifers were uh, only one to five dollars higher, but uh, a sharply higher market there in Oklahoma City, and it still uh, pretty much gauges your, uh, your market for the week. Joplin Regional Stockyards in Carthage, Missouri sold 6,400 and it was even more sharply higher, if you guys can believe it. Uh, the Pee Wee steer calves weighing under five. Uh, they, they sold from 10 to $30 higher. And I know $30 may not be a lot on a three or four weight steer calves, but if you're making comparisons, I mean, it's that big of a deal. Steers weighing over five or two to eight bucks higher. Uh, lightweight heifers are five to $25 higher. Uh, your heifers weighing over five and a half were steady to five dollars lower, but uh, stick out sale there in Joplin uh, on uh, on some yearling steers was 220 head of 898 or 900 pound yearling feeder steers that bring 239. I thought that was pretty good. How about your national beef wire stick out sale of the day? Uh, it was Faith Livestock in Faith, South Dakota, not far at all from where. I was out on Monday, probably would have rather been over there, but I would have missed Harriet Hageman's talk and I sure wouldn't have wanted to do that. Uh, they had about 8,000 over there, one of their best calf offerings, about uh, over 7,000 calves and then a few yearlings there, uh, but 1,376 head of the four weight steer calves had a weighted average weight of 457 and a weighted average price of 350.58 on all of those four weight steer calves. How about 2,641? Sale was still going when I pulled this information, but I got the bulk of them, but five weight steers and Faith had a weighted average weight of 547, a weighted average price of 317.28. Very impressive, weighing nearly five and a half, all over 2,600 of them, averaging over 317, guys. Wow, how about the heifers? 1,013 head of four weight heifers averaged 449 with a weighted average price of 320.63. Uh, 
And then your five weight heifers, there were 648 of them when I pulled the market. Average 525, weighted average price 314.65. Some individual quotes that were impressive on Monday. Russell Livestock Market in Russell, Iowa, DV Auction Broadcaster there, they sold 67 steers, weighed 624 at 288.60. Goodness. How about Sioux Falls Regional Livestock in Worthing, South Dakota? They sold 132 head of 866 pound feeder steers, bring 259.50. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday in your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day, indeed come out of Faith, uh, South Dakota there. It was 55 steers, uh, you, know, you can imagine how fancy they were, weighed 400 pounds smooth, and bring 388. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday. I'm Corbett Wall with this feeder flash feature. I'm here with Chad Tenniger from Legacy Beef Co-op and Cattlemen's Heritage. And uh, we're gonna give you some information about getting in on the ground floor of a co-op that's gonna own part of Cattlemen's Heritage, a new privately owned packing plant. Uh, hopefully we'll give you an opportunity to stay profitable and stay in the cattle feeding business and compete with the big four pack. How are you doing today, Chad? Good, Corbett. Glad to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about this uh, new and exciting venture that you got going? Yeah, I'd love to. So we started out, Legacy Co-op is an outshoot of Cattlemen's Heritage Beef Company, the new processing plant outside of Council Bluffs that'll be uh, 525,000 head a year will be processing right outside of Council Bluffs off of the I-29 corridor over there. We've got about 132 acres. We've cleared the land. We're ready to break ground next spring. And Legacy Co-op will be the supply of the cattle that will feed that plant that, with the producer involvement. Okay, so all the cattle that come into that plant will be through Legacy Co-op. That is the goal, yes. We want to make sure that the producer has a uh, say in how the plants run, the say in how the market works. All these things that we as producers, when I put my producer cap on, I want to get the best value for my cattle. Well, I don't think there's any way I can ever get the best value for my cattle if I don't participate in the processing end of it. Because obviously in the last decade, we've seen very clearly that the only way we're ever going to get what we think we deserve is to actually participate in the ownership. Okay, so you say uh, these, these co-op members are going to have a say in what goes on at the plant. How's that gonna work? So how we've set up the co-op is, it's buying shares. One share is one delivery obligation a year. So there's 525,000 shares up for sale. Once you deliver your cattle, what you're gonna gain in the beginning is, you're gonna get access to a grid. Everybody knows how a grid works, premiums and discounts. But our grid's gonna be tied to the box beef cutout. We are not gonna tie it to the CME. We fundamentally believe that the CME does not represent the cattle fundamentals in the country on a day-to-day -day basis. I think we could all agree to that. There's no, trader, there's no traders in the pits anymore. There's no human contact. It's computer algorithms trading on headlines and we're at the mercy of it. So beginning, the fundamental belief is let's tie it to the box beef cutout. At least then we know we got a fair shake. You also, if you're a member of the co-op, you get a $25 bonus every time you deliver. So automatically it's $25 more than you would have got anywhere else. And then at the end of the day, for buying into the co-op, that co-op is gonna have roughly, give or take, 20% ownership in Cattlemen's Heritage Beef Company. So true ownership in the plant, in the company, in the brand, whatever we can create out of this, you have ownership in and get a margin in those profits. So these unit shares, you, you assume they're gonna uh, gain in value as time goes on. Every other company that we've looked at like this, in the pork industry, there's more of these companies with producer involvement. All those shares just increase in value you can sell them, you can, you know, and your kids can inherit them, pass it down. But ultimately, you have a say in how the system works that you're participating in. So you're offering producers an opportunity to get in on the ground floor. Yeah, I've been in this business my whole life. And we as producers, we, my whole life we've been saying, you know, we, we don't have any say in how we sell our product, what comes from it, we're at the mercy of everybody. This is an opportunity to be in the ground floor at the cheapest you're gonna get in to actually take ownership in a company that you'll participate in. You know, we've set it up. The Cattlemen's Heritage will have its own board. The co-op will have its own board. They will work together hand in hand in an advisory board. Each board will have two members of the other. So we have true ownership in the game. So when we talk about 
how are we going to sell cattle or how's the grid going to work exactly? You're going to have a seat at the table with us deciding those very things. So the plan itself, you're expecting to pretty much run on a consistent margin then and then, then the extra money is going to be premiums for the producer? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple system. You tie a grid to a set point. We're going to tie it to the box beef cutout. Then you have to plant production. You can't break the plant, right? It's got, it costs X amount to run. You minus that out, and then you start on quality of cattle. You're still going to be paid for quality cattle on a premium discount basis. That would be very similar to how a grid works today. Yeah. One thing we are looking at pretty closely that we might change, you know, when, especially when you get discounts on fours and fives. Right. In today's world, in reality, there's not really much of a discount on a four. Yeah. And what's heading coming up that a lot of people probably don't realize, but 45Z, it's a huge tax credit that's coming on the tax code for anything biofuels. That's what all the ethanol industry is doing. That's what they're talking about. That's why they're paying you. Well, our fats and towels and the cattle are worth gold right now going to the biodiesel. And we're not getting a part of that. And there's going to be yet another revenue stream that we won't see. So, you know, when you start adding up all the value adds that we as producers do, that we don't participate in, at a certain point in time, all of us producers are just saying, I'm doing the most I will do to create value that I don't get to participate in. So we talked about the cattle. What kind of cattle are you looking for? We're just really looking for northern, western genetics, right? That's going to be the cattle. The kind of cattle we feed where we are. If you take a, if you put a pin in Council Bluffs, that's where the plant will be. You go 300 miles in any direction, that's a lot of high quality cattle. And so we're not going to limit it to just black hide it or anything like that. It'll be just all quality cattle because the system's still set up. You deliver quality, you'll make more money. Okay, so no particular program. Yeah. It's just where you're where you're at on the globe. That's the kind of cattle you want. That's exactly Island right. Type cattle. Yeah, and the system will work. That if somebody thinks they're going to deliver really bad cattle, the the, the negatives will still be there. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't work. It, it still functions the same. And within that, over time, again, will there be programs that maybe develop like anything does? There could be. If there's more value at the end, of course, why wouldn't we bring it back into the plant? And then again, the co-op will own twenty percent of the plant, so it's a true dividend at the end of the year. So are you looking at, at Cattlemen's Heritage having a, a retail label? Yeah. Okay. So. so the end goal is create a brand. Okay. So what we've talked a lot about the last three years. We're three years into due diligence of this plant. That's why we're so confident in where we are today. What we've discovered is the, ca <clears throat> the cattle industry has done the worst job ever of telling its story of its greatest asset, and that's the farmers and ranchers and producers. We have all these amazing men and women working every day in this industry, we don't tell their story, right? you know? So we're gonna tell the story. Our marketing is gonna be, you know, look at these family farmers, look at the ranchers, look at what they do every day. When they don't do a good job, they lose farms. They lose their livelihood. So you better believe if anything in the world of doing the best quality for what you're putting on your kitchen table, it comes out of our farmers and ranchers. How are you going to compete with the big four? So there's a couple ways. We have done three years of due diligence to figure out why plants don't work when they don't work. What causes a failure, right? Undercapitalized, we have the capital. Bad location, that I cannot overstate having a bad location. We're outside of Council Bluffs, there's a million people right outside that door. That, so we have plenty of work. The other thing we look at is, how do you compete? That's the question, right? How do you compete? Well, the co-op, will be a supply of cattle, that's a bunch of producers that have signed up to deliver cattle because they want to share in the upside profits. So on the front side, you can't outbid the cattle. Those cattle are already committed, they're coming in and they're committed because they're going to get rewarded better. Mm -hmm. So we know we'll have the cattle supply coming into the plant. Then selling the beef, what we found over the last three years is as frustrated as we get as producers that we can only really sell to a handful of companies, on the retail side, there's a lot of frustration on that end too, that they only get to buy from a couple of companies. So we've been contacted by over 80 companies to buy beef today. But at this point, you haven't gone into partnership with any uh, prospective customers. We haven't point. yet, but we're finalizing some of that. We will have a, a major partner on offer. I think you need to. And we will, we're working through that. So what we wanted to make sure is, A, do we have the capital to build? Can we build the right plant, a highly efficient plant? Are we in the right location? Once we cleared all those hurdles, that's a big part of what a retailer, an end user wants to know too. Sure. Do you guys have all your ducks in a row so when we're ready to buy meat? So before we break ground, we'll have a major partner signed up to buy the product. Another way that we've done that we feel is really important is these old plants, they're old. 
They're tired. They're inefficient. They started by you know processing 2,000 head a day. They're doing 5,000 head a day. Right. And you know there's plants in this country that you know if you built them today might have two forklifts and they got 36 running around that plant. Things like that. The way we've designed it with new technology, proven technology. Our technology came out of Europe, New Zealand, Australia, and the reason we're doing that is they hit their labor issues 20 years before we did. So in a world where labor's tight, especially in this industry, you gotta be as efficient as you can. We will process 2,000 head a day. A typical plant takes uh, 1,200 employees to do that. We'll have 800. Wow. 400 less employees, that translates to 25 million a year in savings to the plant, which transfers $50 a head, cheaper production cost. So our plant will operate at a cheaper per head production cost than any plant in the system. And that's where you get the margin. So when you start thinking about how they're going to squeeze you out, well, they'd have to start losing $100 a head where we start breaking even. Mm -hmm. And that's an important part of this that we looked at. Again, it's not that complicated to say, I'm going to go build a plant and then just go throw one up somewhere. What's complicated is to be successful. Right. And I assume you've got your team pretty well set because you've got to have people that have experience in this kind of stuff because it's it's a tough business. Yeah, we get asked that a lot, and that's a really important question. And I make sure everybody knows today I'm the head of the company. I will not be running a plant. That is not my expertise. <laughs> I've never claimed to be that guy. But what we will do is the beauty of what's happened in the system is because there's just a few companies that really have the top guys out there, mm -hmm. A lot of people retire 56 to 60 out of that world, and there's a lot they're of people. Yet. They're not even close to done. Right. There is so much talent in this space that's there to available. We've identified it. We've hired advisors from day one. So I have an advisor that his entire job is just to identify that talent and make sure that when we open our doors, we have the right talent in place. Because there's another way. If you want to fail, just don't put the team together. You know, try and save money on your management team. That's a great way to fail. So. You know, we're looking for some for, for some new uh, co-op members. And uh, how much risk do you think there is involved in this? What we've done is we went two and a half years and we talked to producers and got all their point of views and heard every comment we could talk about. And at the end of the day, we developed this program we're in today. And this is the final program we're going out. So what it is, there's various stages of the co-op membership. You are rewarded to get in early. The first round, there's five rounds. The first round is $125 a unit. It goes up $25 every round, it's split pretty evenly through the rounds. So that that's not a huge investment in the cattle world today. No, that's especially the prices we're at now. <laughs> it is today. How it works is right now it's $25 down. So if you want to buy a unit today, it's $25 down. Okay. That holds your spot. Then we're going to come out in end of the year, right at the end of the year with the final Here's your final agreement, sign up. If you decide at that point in time, you know what, something's changed, I don't want in on this, we'll refund $15, we gotta keep 10 because we spent 10 to put the system together. So all you're really putting at risk today is 10 bucks. 10 bucks a unit, and if you don't like it at the end, your 15 comes home. If you do like it at the end, before we break ground, roughly 30 days before we break ground, the balance of it will be owed. I, we made it as simple as we could. To be honest, when we first started this, I was hoping to have the producers own 60, 70% of this. Mm -hmm. We found there's not a lot of appetite for that because that, then you're talking five, six, $700 a unit. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that's a lot of money. Well, it sounds to me like you're not really looking at this co-op to, to give the bulk of your capital to build this Absolutely plant. Not. You're, you're ready to build the plant. You're just giving folks opportunity to, to get into the supply of the cattle. The plant's gonna get built no matter what because what we've done in two and a half years is we've found the debt, we found the equity, we're working on all these pieces of the pie. We've got the MPAP award from the USDA, which is the largest, the 25 million you can get from that to build more packing industry, right? So we've been working on all these pieces. At the end of the day, the 100 million, roughly, if you sell 520,000 units, that's come from producers, but that's a 500, and, it's a 500 million dollar plant. So that's where you get your 20% ownership, give or take, it's a true equity play. Mm -hmm. And for us, that's the passion of it. The producers need to get involved so we have the final say in the outcome also. Anybody that's in the cattle industry should be in this. And I tell bankers, I've talked to a lot of bankers, there's not a cattle feeder that I know that shouldn't take this opportunity. When you think about what it costs, if you return $25 a head, just on, you know, it, once a year, it gets one space, but that's five years, your initial investment's back just off of that, and then you've risked nothing. Right. 
it's, it's a low risk maneuver that opens up a top end. So we did a lot of data mining to find out what, how the math works. In the last decade, if you just take an average of how the industry has worked in the past, box beef versus what an average would be is about 61.3% of the box beef cutout is where the industry has averaged in the past. From, in fact, from 04 to 13, that was exactly what it averaged, 61.3. If you take that same number extended to today for the last 10 years, you'll find between what we sold our cattle for and what the packer had at 61.3, there's $206 on every animal of a margin that we didn't participate in. So I've heard a big pushback I've had is, well, if you're gonna give the producer all the money, the pack goes broke. Well, I'm here to tell you, the numbers don't lie. You can do the data mining yourself and figure it out. There's $206 on every head we sold in the last decade on average that we didn't participate in that margin. I'm not saying it's all ours as producers, I'm just saying there's a buffer there that certainly there's a middle ground we should all partake in. Right, right. We've been told our whole lives, you do it our way, you don't get paid at all. Now we're sitting here saying, if you, if you do it, if we create more value, we're gonna pay you for it. Well, Chad, thanks for all the information here about Legacy Beef Co-op and Cattlemen's Heritage. If folks are, are interested in making an investment or finding out more about this, where should they go? Best place to go would be go to LegacyBeefCoop.com or Cattlemen'sHeritage.com. Either one will give you a link to go here to get the information. Okay. Well, I appreciate all the information today and, and enjoyed the visit. Thank you. Thank you.